Uh, today, I would like to give a, a short introduction uh, to the uh, finite difference time domain method or with the acronym FTTD. Uh, I'm Shanhui Fan from Flex Compute. So uh, the finite difference time domain method uh, or FTTD uh, is a method uh, for simulating interaction of light uh, with uh, structures and materials. Uh, it is really the uh, mostly uh, most widely used and general purpose method uh, for solving uh, Maxwell equation and is very widely used uh, in photonics and electromagnetics. Uh, it allows you to simulate a wide range of phenomena uh, in photonics. So uh, below I have a few uh, images of uh, some of the structures that people have uh, simulated using FTTD method that range from photonic crystal nano cavity to grating coupler in silicon photonics to ring resonators to matter surfaces. So uh, the purpose of this course uh, is to give you a broad understanding of the uh, finite difference time domain method, uh, what is it useful for, and also, even though we're not going to go into great details of the algorithm itself, uh, we would like to give you a sense of how it works, uh, what the algorithm look like at a high conceptual level. And the ultimate aim uh, is to get you to start to use it. So uh, the course would go through uh, a number of examples in increasing complexity so that you will get a sense of how to use this method. And all these examples uh, are implemented uh, using FlexCompute Tidy 3D FTTD solver, and we'll provide links with the uh, input files uh, for each of these examples so you can try them out yourself. So uh, if you are using FTTD, you are solving Maxwell equations, and therefore I assume that you know something about Maxwell equations already. But just as a very brief overview, uh, the Maxwell equation describes the dynamics of electrical, the E field, and magnetic field, the H field. And so uh, these are how the equation look like. And so the dynamics is the E and H field in a structure as described by a permittivity distribution epsilon r here. The structure is then excited by a current source, usually a time oscillating current. This equation is a time domain equation that uh, describes the evolution of electrical, uh, electric and magnetic field as a function of time. And so FTTD method, the TD stands for time domain. So it's exactly a time domain method that allow you to directly compute such time evolution in the FTTD method, the input to the solver are the permittivity distribution, and that describes how the device look like, as well as the source that excites the device. These information are then provided to an FTTD solver that allow you to determine the time dynamics of the electric and magnetic field. And from these time dynamics, one extract information that's important for FIDIC study and device design. So uh, as the first illustration of the FTTD method, uh, we're gonna solve a example that you probably have all learned in your electromagnetic class, and that is to simulate the emission pattern of a dipole uh, in a vacuum. So uh, we would like to compute the electric field that's generated out of an oscillating dipole. And so in this setup, uh, we're gonna set up it so that the permittivity is one everywhere, relative permittivity is one everywhere, so it's vacuum. And we position the dipole source and we choose the dipole source to be oscillating harmonically as a function of time. And the oscillation frequency correspond to a free space wavelength of one micron. So in setting up FTTD method, uh, one of the first thing that you need to do is to choose the computational domain. In our case, as it turned out, that the dipole source uh, would uh, go through, as, it, uh, as you move away from the dipole source, the field will go from the near field zone 
to the far field zone. And we would like the setup that will capture this transition. And therefore, we choose a relatively large computational cell, computational domain with a, a cube with a side lens of nine micron corresponding to nine wavelengths. And uh, perhaps as a general uh, comment, uh, all these computational setup is uh, closely related to the physics or the device characteristic that you are interested in understand. And so in this case, uh, the choice of the, uh, uh, the, uh, you, uh, the computational domain size definitely reflect that. The finite difference time domain method, the first two words is finite difference. And that means that you would take the computational domain and then discretize it by a little cubes. And then so that you would describe the fields on a discrete lattice formed by these cube. In the FTTD method, the cube is something called the E cell. So a little cube inside the computational domain, uh, when you blow it up, will look something like this. The electric fields are distributed on the edge of the E cell and the magnetic field are distributed on the surface of the E cell. And the way this distribution is set up, in fact, very closely reflect the underlying geometry of Maxwell equation. For our purpose here, and also in general, when you set up FTTD simulation, an important parameter is the discretization, is to choose how large the, uh, uh, how large the this, this each individual cube needs to be. So a typical rule of thumb is to choose the discretization to be about wavelengths over 20. Given that we're using a one micron wavelength, this corresponds to a 50 nanometer discretization. In the examples that I'm gonna show you, however, uh, in order to generate perhaps a nicer looking movie, we have chosen, we have chosen a finer discretization with a uh, discretization of 20 nanometer. And with nine micron computational domain size, uh, this translate already to be about half a billion unknowns. So uh, it is really, I guess, the magic of modern computing that uh, one in fact is able to do these kind of problem with billions of unknown in the problem. So uh, the other aspect of the simulation is on the boundary condition. So we have a computational domain set up like this, but we would like the field that's emitted from the dipole to go out of the computational domain without coming back to interfere with it so that we can generate the radiating pattern of a dipole radiating into free space. For this purpose in FTTD, it's very common to surround the computational domain by a specially designed absorber called the perfectly matched layer. The thickness of this layer is about typically tens of the E cells. So with this, now we can put the whole thing together. And uh, as I mentioned, this is the computational domain. This is where the dipole source is. And we're going to generate a movie showing how the Z component of the electric field vary on the plan as highlighted by gray here. And that's the movie on the right. You see the dipole oscillating at the middle. And uh, you can see that the wavelength is about one micron. This is basically the peak to peak distance. The red and blue here correspond to large positive and negative fields. And also you see that in the far field zone, when you are sufficiently far from the dipole, there's very little emission in the vertical direction. And that's a, a very characteristic of the far field zone of a dipole radiation. So uh, in this example, I've shown you something that you probably have seen in your textbook of a dipole radiation pattern. And this is something that you can compute analytically. Uh, one of the key strengths of FTTD, however, is that uh, we show you, you can simulate vacuum, but you can also simulate complex structure that you put in with essentially the same setup. So, uh, 
as the last example of this tutorial, uh, we will put a dipole source again, the same computational cell, but we'll put also three dielectric block. And here is the movie of the uh, electric field distribution. And you can see how the fields now is very strongly perturbed by the presence of these blocks. So to uh, maybe summarize uh, this uh, first uh, video, uh, what we show here is the general concept of FTTD and show you uh, a visual example that you can generate nice looking movie associated with the variation of the field uh, as a function of time. Uh, in the next lectures, uh, we are going to build upon this and show you how you can use this capability to get useful information about real devices.